All right. What's happening, man? Nothing much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I am uh, Al Stasic. I am here with the one, the only, Aldo Narcisi. Man, it. It, this has been like, um, it's like, it's, you ever like know somebody, but you don't really know them, but you just know them because of social media connections, knowing all the same people, and like, how is it that we just don't know each other? It's that's how I felt like. It's been a while. That's how I felt like it with, with, with us two, because I've been following you on Instagram, and, um, and you're just... Your, all your adventures from Cleveland to sometimes I see you in Chicago, LA, wherever, and uh, and now you're you're involved in Forward. Yep. But before that, I used to see you on Fox Sports, and I'm like, this guy's <laughs> everywhere, you know? Uh, yeah, so, it's, uh, it's been a, it's been a crazy few years here in Cleveland. Man, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, cool. So I mean, you know, like we had said, man, I mean, from 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 the days in Pittsburgh to then Cleveland Indians covering games and this and that, and now you're director of VIP operations over at Forward. Um, who is Aldo Narcisi? Who is Aldo? That is a good question. Sometimes I don't even know who he is. <laughs> um, no, it's just, you know, Pittsburgh born and raised. Always loved Pittsburgh, but I can honestly say I'm such a Cleveland guy now. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable being yeah. here. How often do you hear that? Where so like, much. I mean, I started out with the Pittsburgh Steelers like we were just talking about. It, it was the right. craziest transition. Yeah. Uh, you know, going from not only NFL to MLB. Pittsburgh to Cleveland of all places, and this right. was this was before Cleveland was cool. Yeah, so sure. you know, coming here was different. I went to John Kerry University. Okay, loved my four years there. It was amazing, amazing experience. Immediately moved downtown. Was blessed with the opportunity with Fox Sports. The Indians uh, were there several years, but it's just uh, to watch the city go from what it was. Yeah, and so quickly become what it is now. Yep. It was just, it's been such an honor to be a part of that and consider myself a part of the transition. It's yeah. been amazing. And you yeah. the same way. I'm yeah, yeah. I've seen the same exact thing. Well, I've seen, yeah, I've seen the transition. <laughs> I'm a little bit older than you. Yeah. And, I mean, I remember going down to the Indians games mm-hmm. with my dad, who was a Teamster. So he'd get free tickets to the Indians, and we would be going to the games. And you've seen the movie, um, uh, Major League, wow, where I'm they were literally you. heckling. the. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> I would, And I was so young, and I had my glove, and I was already, and I'm like, Dad, why are – are we, why are we teasing our own players? And, and he just said, son, one day I'll explain it and you'll understand. Because he didn't have any, he was lost a word. No but, idea. So, so, yes, I saw what it was then and I see what it is now and it just puts a giant smile on my face. You know, like they have those T-shirts out. Like I loved Cleveland before it was cool. You know, I mean, it's just, they're, you know, we, we can point at a lot of things. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind and we can talk about this later is LeBron James. I mean, I mean, what else can you say if you had to point to just one thing, um, one man, um, what he's done for the city? But I want to start back with you. Okay, let's do it. You came to John Carroll. You want to start there? Or yeah, you want sure. To start in Pittsburgh. Where sure. I mean, from, well, man? roots. Uh, roots uh, like I said, born and raised. Yeah. Big Italian family. Yeah. In uh, Pittsburgh, um, worked for the Steelers. Was so lucky to get a job out of high school with the Steelers. Really got my, you know. Social career started. Yeah, I was picked on all my life, yeah. high school, everything, late bloomer, girls didn't like me yet, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Steelers came along, and that kind of really began, you know, my transition to who I am today. And awesome. without that, I don't think I'd be here. Right. Um, a lot of stuff happened growing up. You know, my my dad got really sick, all this kind of stuff. But it all every I'm a for like firm believer, everything happens for a reason. Sure. And I really think without all that happened, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, which is. You know, the happiest I've ever been. I love my new position. I'm grateful for everything that's happened. Uh, but yeah, yeah, pumped out some Super Bowls with the Steelers. Yeah, had my fun there. That's cool. Came to John Carroll, uh, big family school. So my dad, my grandpa, my aunt, they all went to. John oh, okay. So that's, that's how I found out about it. Cool. And you know what? I had a chance to actually. You know, my dad's associated with Pitt. Um, I had a chance to go there, stay with the Steelers. I really wanted to try something new, get out of town. Right. And just absolutely fell in love with John Carroll. Made a lifelong friends there made the connections that I needed to, you know, end up joining the Fox right out of school. Yeah. And then that began just this entire whirlwind that I feel like hasn't stopped for yeah. six years now. Well, John Carroll <laughs> is, is, is definitely, it's a standout school in the yeah. area. I mean, it really, it really is. It's, it's a creme de la creme. Amazing. It's, campus is great, too. You ended up in a really good spot, even though Cleveland isn't where it was when, yep. when you went. That area has always been rich in culture and just really cool stuff to do. You had Little Italy right there. Yep. You know, it's um, it wasn't terrible. I'm no, sure. that, that yeah, area yeah, was yeah. great. Yeah, Legacy Village, Beachwood, yep. John Carroll, who was just a gorgeous campus. Yeah. Uh, really cool area to kind of like, you could say, grow up in. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, that's when that's before people even really went downtown. Sure. They all they would all the school would always advise us, you know, I stay away from downtown, this kind of stuff. Right. There was nothing really to do yet. And the teams nobody was good, including the Cavs. And that just, you know, we kind of hung out over there. But then the older we got and the more associated with downtown I got, I, you know, started finding little places that are cool. Mm-hmm. And then it just, you know, the big man, like you just said, came back and the boom started and just. Now, it, were, you in, were you already with Fox when that happened? I was with the Indians. Me and former pitcher uh, Jason Stanford, of all people, were on a golf course. And we were on, like, the second hole. We finally got out before a game. Um Back. When he came back is what Got I was it. talking about. Got it. And that was just such a mega boom. And he, as a person, I consider him a friend now. And, you know, it's that's been an amazing experience in itself. That's a whole other story. Yeah. And um, I want to dig into just, that. Oh, we minute. will for sure. I got yeah, yeah. lots of LeBron stories that's for you. That's awesome. Um, just to see the maturity of him. I know a lot of people are mad at him right now. You know, there's mixed opinions on that. I am, I'm torn between it. But uh, just to I'll see the maturity. I'm not mad. No, I'll be honest. I'm not mad. I mean, I was I was um, emotional. Is probably a better word uh, the first time around, like everyone else was, because of the way he approached it. But he was young, and I don't think he had the the support of of good people yeah. um, that he had now. And you grow as a person, just like you and I have grown, right? Exactly. So I'm not mad. I mean, I mean, I look at what he's done for the city, and I can't help but feel grateful. Yeah. Period. Now we can we could. We could come up with a bunch of different scenarios. Oh, he yeah. should have done this, or he should have done, you know. Yeah. But but it, it's not our life. No, he it's uh, his life. You know, he has a family now, and he's always been a very good, you know, family guy. I can vouch for him on that and everything like that. It's just he, the maturity of from when he left the first time for when he came back, is he, he's a grown up now, and you yeah. got to understand that LeBron never had that college experience. Right. That you, I had a lot of people had to. That's a big growing period. High school to so, multi-million dollar. Face of a league. Yeah. And people have no idea. Yeah. And being around them, you can just see it. But, no, that was huge. And then, you know, everything kind of took off from there. Yeah. Um, the Indians got really good really quick, which was amazing because that team is just, there's, you know, until Frankie Lindor and Jose now this year, there's never been a real, you know, some superstar Mike Trout, Bryce Harper kind of guy. It's just a group of fun, like, good-hearted guys. Yeah. No one's ever in trouble. No, one, It's just a group of guys that you like to watch play and you want to see do good. Yeah. And that's why it was so fun to be a part of it. It was just like a, you know, they say the term clubhouse, but it was... It was a family. Un- unbelievable. I'd go down there every day, I'd be there four hours before the game, and it's just, they're laughing, having a good time. Everybody's hanging out. Everybody's making plans. Right. Everybody's, you know, cool with me, cool with our group of people from Fox, everything. It, it was an amazing atmosphere. And so, ever since then, when Tito came back, it's just been... That's just been such a cool franchise to be around. I love it. I want to unpack something. You had mentioned you got bullied, late bloomer. When you started saying that, I got goosebumps because that was me. <laughs> yeah. That was me. I mean, it's just so funny, the parallels. But, I mean, I, I didn't want to interrupt you because you were flowing. But, I mean, it's part of um, the value that I hope people get out of this is that, you know, um, you said the girls didn't like it. This, and I mean, dude, you keep going on. That was me. Yeah. And yet you're successful and you made it through and you pushed through. Where was the transition from John Carroll to the Indians, and, and were you drawn to them, or did they find you? Tell me about how, like, the experiences that you had where you had to, like, maybe you are gotten your ass kicked or, you know, messed with by every asshole in school or whatever to, like, I'm on the Indians. Yeah, you know, like, it was, uh, yeah, I'm on TV, and where are you, you know? <laughs> exactly, and you got to keep that in, you know, I'm always <laughs> – I have I have a little you know my Italian temper. I like to hold grudges as a lot yeah, of people yeah, do. Yeah. But after a while, you just gotta you gotta look back and laugh and realize. My dad always told me growing up like your time will come. Yeah. And I just didn't want to believe it. Didn't want to believe it. Didn't want to believe it. Yeah. Um. You know, getting like, almost scared to go to school sometimes. Sat and ate lunch by myself half the time. Oh yeah. You no, know, ask girls to dance as they laugh and you know, go. You know, all <laughs> that kind brutal. Of brutal. High school is brutal. I feel yeah. so bad for anybody who's in high school right now. Yeah. But you know what? Just get through it, and your time will come. Yeah. Everybody grows up. Everybody does this and. Looking back at it and comparing my life with a lot of the kids, you can't even be like, ha ha, I told you. Like, it's just, right. you know, I just be grateful for what you have. I forgave them all. Exactly. It's, I mean, I, you come to a point where you're not being that. angry. Yeah. I, mean, I straight up don't care anymore. Yeah. And looking back at it, it's high school. What a weird time. Hormones, everything was crazy. Were you a fighter? No, I was very small. I didn't have hair under my arms yet. I was a, I was a mess. Right. <laughs> and, um, couldn't find anybody. It was, a, it was a private school that was really good at sports. So a lot of athletes, a lot okay. of you know, D1 recruits, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. I was low man on the totem pole for a while. 
And then the Steelers happened. They started seeing me on like Monday Night Football. Like, oh, I saw you last night. Everybody yeah. started asking me for stuff, invited places. Yeah. And I'm funny how this works, you know? Wow. And yeah. then, you know, college was a fresh start, and John Carroll was such an amazing place to do that. Um, a lot of kids, exactly like from the situation I was in, right. were there. Right. And that was amazing. And then it just then it just took off, which you gotta keep yourself in check. I went through I went through a you know, a phase where I, you know, oh, I'm top of the world. I can do what I want. Yeah, right. Type of thing. Sure. No, no, yeah. no, not at all. But uh, that, I, bet you, I bet you got your mama brought you right back to the. Right? Every time I went home with a little and bit. I met of her much, one time. I mean, it was at an event. The fashion show. Yeah, yes, you met both my parents. Show, yes. Yeah, they. Yeah, anytime I went home with a little bit too much uh, confidence, <laughs> I got knocked right back down. Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah. Um, no, that I attribute a lot of my success now and you know social status now to to that. Yeah. Because you really enjoy it and appreciate it and everything like that, and then you know I was just I just had the same conversation with somebody. You know, LeBron met up with us in Vegas for my birthday. Oh, cool! And you know, somebody's just like, "Oh, dude, I remember you telling me you used to sit by yourself for lunch. Now you got King James coming to your birthday party and stuff." It's the coolest, the coolest transition ever. And I'm yeah. beyond blessed and don't regret anything that's happened in my life at all. Yeah, and uh, it's it's awesome. And I'm sure you I feel wanna, the same way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I want to dig into that LeBron story. <laughs> Best for last. Okay. Don't go anywhere because if you want to hear some cool stories, uh, we'll go there. But what was the part that I mean? Obviously, you parted ways with Fox, and now you're with Forward, which I can't wait to you yes, know that's... talk about Forward because it's my favorite nightclub ever <laughs> for multiple reasons. Yep. And we we're both, you know, I'm friends with Bobby. He runs an amazing organization, and now he has you on the leadership team. But um, what do you miss most about? Indians and, and covering that and, and that experience. So I miss, I was infatuated with television. It was my, my dream to be a broadcaster, all this. You get into it, you know, TV has its glamorous side, TV has its political side, TV yeah. has its dark side. Loved it. The mo the part I loved the most about the whole experience was the connection it made with the, you know, I, I covered all the teams, but the Indians was just my baby. It was 182 days a year, every single game, right. every single away game, home game, everything. And the connection I made with those guys and just being at the ballpark every day, and being, you know, at the time a 23, 24 year old kid, right. nobody gets to walk right out of the field, go to the dugout, hang out in the clubhouse. These guys know you by name. Yeah. You go up in a private box, watch the game, go down to the locker room afterwards. It just for being a baseball fanatic, that in itself was such a cool experience that I was like, saying out literally out loud, I would catch myself, like, oh, God, I don't want to go to the ballpark today. I don't want to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm, trying to see, I'm trying to see if there's anybody who got some questions because I put him I put it in there. Um can't find the broadcast down here, but not a big deal. Whatever. Do you see any? Oh, here it is. There we go. You see, there we go. Any qu questions? Who's got questions for Aldo? Oh, Christine Neely. Oh, Kristen Neely. What's up? She used to babysit me. Get out. <laughs> there you go. What's yep. up, Christine? Your man's live and direct. Kristen. Yeah, she used to babysit me. Oh, that's awesome. That's <laughs> She's awesome. She's my next door neighbor. Yeah. Any um, questions you got for Aldo? Type it in there. Give us some love. Hit some hearts. Give us some hearts if uh, you're loving the story. But um, let's dig into. So the thing you left, I mean, it was your dream job. Obviously, it was probably tough to, to, to leave. Was. But tell us about a little bit of that transition, and, and then we can get into some it's just So the transitions yeah. all started because, you know, I tribute. You know, a lot of people I worked with Fox that took me out. I didn't know anybody yet in Cleveland. I didn't, you know, they took me to these clubs. They took me to you know, West Sixth Street, to a lot of these nice restaurants. Um, really started my social social circle, and you know, I tripped a lot about the my good friend Jason Kimmis from the Indians. He he brought me under his wing, introduced me to everybody, kind of got me into that circle. And without that, none of this I feel like would be possible. So I became as soon as the four concept came out. I was one of the first two people to get a tour from Mr. Bobby Rudder himself throughout cool. the, it was just rock. It was nothing yet. Yeah. And I was like, this is going to be amazing. He booked my birthday party that year in August before the club was even laid out. Right. I had a table reserved before the club was even built and awesome. I loved it. I fell in love with it. So, you know, it opens up, I see this amazing concept and this was really a big driving point to this whole new nightlife and restaurant scene and entertainment scene here in Cleveland. Um, the venue's amazing. It did so much. The whole, you know, Scott's whole project in the flats, the whole East Bank has just changed the city. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, we when I, I had told you, I interviewed Bobby and we talked yeah. about this and everyone was telling him it ain't going to work. You're putting a Vegas-like club in downtown in Cleveland? Cleveland Come on. And he had his doubters and he yeah. just stayed true. And, and sure enough, um, going back to what your birthday party, so you were booking it when it was August, and they were still laying the concrete. Yeah, literally I was, grab we were booking our first rock and restock at the same exact time. They weren't even open. Yeah. So we were their first, like, other than a DJ, rock event yep. right when they opened. 
So yeah, they I knew what they wanted right when it came open. Yeah, yeah. So I became you know one of their first regulars. Me and the guys I'd bring on the Indians, the Cavs, the oh, Browns yeah. in. So yeah. I, you know I was all, I was already friends with those guys, and we were going out other places. And now we got this new, literally adult playground to go have that, fun at. That was so, a good decision on his part. Yes, to bring it was. You in, yes, right? it was. So yeah. that's how I got to know all those guys: Dante, Bobby, all the you know Julie, all the staff over there. Yeah. Um, and I just loved it. So we were there every weekend. Every day we were getting Bobby Dante to drop subtle hints. Oh, you should come on. You should come on. I was like, at that point, I couldn't be associated with nightlife, really. Oh, so yeah, even me going out was frowned upon, which oh. as a 23, 24-year-old kid with access to all this kind of stuff and these people, oh, yeah. it's like telling you. Know, I'm hanging out with the Indians and Browns. I can't, I, can't, I can't say no to it. Right. And um, so we started going out, started going out, stuff with. You know, Fox LA, to, it was owned by the Indians. Sports on Ohio is when I started, before it was even Fox Sports. Oh, okay. So it a lot of stuff, politically, corporate, everything kind of started changing. A little less fun, a little kind of this stuff. Still was amazing, but, you know, I kept getting, you know, this offer from Bobby. Kept, you know, getting hints, hints, hints. I'm like, you know what, I love it. I'm good at it. I'm already kind of doing it for free. <laughs> and uh, I sat down with Bobby one time. Next thing you know, we signed some papers, and I'm on the forward entertainment group team. And you know what? Looking back at it, first it was a really hard time. Those first few playoff games where I didn't have anything to do with the ballpark, with the locker room, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. Like I didn't want to watch. I couldn't right. really do it. But then, you know, after a while, you start seeing you know the money's a little bit better. This kind of stuff's better. Um, socially, I and I was still had that attitude where I loved being you know Mr. Cleveland, whatever I was doing back then on TV. This kind of stuff being recognized. It's it's more now than it was back then by far. Right. Especially on social and just in public. You know, I got how many phones, like all this kind of stuff. It's just, it's more now so, but it, that that means nothing anymore. Back then, that's where my mindset was. Yeah. Am I still gonna be cool? Almost, Am I still gonna be look? I mean, it's almost the perfect recipe because yeah. you, you, you had to, you, 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 and it wasn't like you were, I was gonna say you were doing your time. You were doing time, you were doing your, you were living the dream and what you did was you created all these relationships when the Fox sports thing went away and you, you graduated to your next career move yeah. those relationships didn't go anywhere no they all stayed and, yeah, that's, yeah. and that's that's so many good people in Cleveland that you know will stick with you through all that right. and trust you enough and to continue to not only bring you business but to you know consider yourself a friend and trust you enough to just you know go from okay this kid was on you know with Fox Sports and Indians to all right I'm gonna go you know I'm gonna try my nightlife now and everything like that and yeah. that's what's made this transition so amazingly easy because I, I hired, I was in charge of hiring all the VIP staff this year. Me and Bobby mm -hmm. sat down, we interviewed hundreds of people. Yeah. Came with our staff, found a lot of amazing people, which we were just talking about. Actually, half of them were from the Indians, um, which is an testament to their organization and everything. But it's so hard for these younger kids, especially, to come in. And this is such an intense business. Every night, it's just you got to you hit quotas, you got to hit numbers to get paid. It's pretty much you know a sales job. Yeah. And it's so hard to get clients we try to send them as much as we can I try to give them as much as possible but it's so hard to make it and I was so lucky the first night I was there I had a full a full slate just the people asking like oh, I gotta come I gotta come I gotta come right and you know I had all the Indians in there the first night I had a couple of Browns it was such an amazing start that it just hasn't stopped since that first night yeah and once you get in and you know Bobby was telling me you're gonna get addicted to it but it has stopped yeah sure I just got back from Vegas I had a great time there yeah. I still like to have a good time but but you what filled it with those I relationships. filled everything. It was those relationships, yeah, exactly. Because you put you put deposits. I, we call it putting deposits. You've been putting deposits into those relationships and asking nothing in return. And now you have you know your business is now a VIP of the hottest club in Cleveland, yeah. and they're coming and they're going to continue to come because of the relationship. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and we have it all covered yeah. between Ford, Magnolia, all of our you know the restaurants right. were open up, the other cities we're looking at, everything like that. And it's just we're creating you know we our goal is to be like, you know, the towel group, stuff like that. Just yeah. And we're going, we're on the way. And to see this Cleveland-based company like this, start with all the people that we had, me, Bobby, Julie, yeah. all of our core group of people is amazing. Yeah. And, the, and the the following we have now and the clout we have around town and just hearing stuff. I just got back from Vegas, went to three different hotel resorts. All of them heard about Ford. Yeah. All the four and a half hour flight away. That's amazing. All knew about Ford Nightclub in Cleveland, Ohio, which is insane. Yeah. In such a crazy industry, clubs barely ever make it. 75% of the clubs or something don't make it past two years. Well, and it's not even just the fact that you guys sell this place out. It holds 2,000 About 1,500 people. 1,500 people. Yeah, we squeeze in. Yeah, yeah. We don't tell the fire department. It's the but. fact that, and, and we discussed this in Bobby's interview on the podcast, of how you guys run it by a set of core values. Yep. You hire and fire by a set of core values. Talk to me a little bit about your favorite, if you were to pick just one of all the core values that you guys got, the grouping of core values, 
you, can you name one yeah. and why? <laughs> Bobby's drilled him in my head. So my favorite probably, which I learned immediately, is you know we could literally give the alcohol away for free. We're not in the business of slinging alcohol bottles, whatever. That's We can give the Tito's, the Grey Goose, literally away for free. What people are paying for is the experience. By the time you get to the front door to get sat at your VIP section or just coming in general mission, anything, we want you to feel like you're a celeb from the door to when you get in. And that's what yeah. people come out to. That's what people get addicted to. That's what people come out to these kind of yeah. places for. They feel the vibe. They do everything. So we are firm believers of we're selling an experience, not alcohol, not a night, nothing. We're just selling you an amazing experience yeah. that you're gonna, you have to come back and try again. Yeah. And you know what? It's that value's really kind of set it home to because you know, you hear, oh, you know, that's people asking for discounts. People, ask, that's expensive. That's we're selling you your section, your experience, right? And you can make it how you want it, and we'll do everything we can to make it exactly what you want. They're not going to be able to walk down Old River Road and and, and, and duplicate it. Nope. So that the cop, you know what I mean? You like, can't duplicate. You're not going to duplicate. Gotta fly it. Four hours to, du to duplicate what we're putting out right now, and it's it's an amazing thing to watch. Yeah, I see it every night, and I see I get text messages all day on Saturday nights, Sunday nights. Yeah, I can't thank you guys enough. That was amazing. I was like, hey, come back. We got you anytime you want. One um, of my favorite parts of following your your, your crew on Instagram is the the huddle. Yeah. And we do a huddle. I, I operate three companies, um, two of them out of this space. My other partners are in Dallas, so we it's all virtual huddles that we do every morning. So I got three huddles a day. I'm all about the huddle because I know what it does to teamwork, and I know how it, it, it brings everybody together around the same purpose, around the same vision. But I've never seen a nightclub do a huddle. It's unheard of. I don't know. They, they may exist, and I could be stand corrected, but I personally never... I've seen nightclubs in Cleveland blow up. Yep. We had, I mean, back before you were in town, there was basement and there was a, a ton of really hot clubs. I just never seen one where the and, and you can feel it in that level of service, which is what you're talking about. Your team works together, and and they huddle, and, and someone shares the inspiration. Everybody puts their hand in, and and it's like, all right, here we're gonna do this, and that that really just carries through. Talk yep. to me. A little bit. Have you Pre ever seen anything like ever, this? I have never seen anything like it. Um, yeah. It's it's really cool because we have so many people don't understand it's we have a hundred employees a night just yeah. in this one venue plus our other venue across the streets open so yeah. we do a pre shift before every every shift with right. the whatever group we have in day shift night nighttime whatever do it every time bring everybody together all the department leads talk we just we want to be transparent with everybody so give them the goals give them you know special people that are coming in we're not trying to hide anything is everybody needs to be on the same page because especially when you squeeze two thousand people into a venue plus you have you know forty individual parties to take care of that all have their own accommodations and requests. Those are the VIP it, yes, spots, Yes, we have right? the cabanas, the tables, all right. the pool, everything. It's such a huge mega operation that people don't realize how many moving parts there are that everybody has to be on the same page or else it's just going to be a mess. Sure. And luckily, sure. so that's why we're, we're transparent with everybody. We get everybody huddled up and then we break off into smaller huddles and make sure all the departments are on the same page. So, yeah. you know, Bobby talks, Julie talks, I talk. And break and everybody knows what they're doing That's so awesome. it's luckily this time of year everybody knows really what they're doing yeah if you have not been to forward you need to check it out and yes. um for our event that's uh, august 30th i'm just gonna go ahead and plug that uh rock and restock we have uh andrea vecchio yeah she's gonna be hosting it and i ran into her at no no pun the indians game <laughs> yesterday i took the, my, my wife yeah. and kids i got tickets and uh we got the home plate club and so I'm Pretty sitting there sick. eating my, my chicken sandwich that I got. I'm like, is that Andrea? It was Andrea. And she was our first guest on this podcast. Okay. And she's like, I can't wait to go to Forward. I've never been to Forward. I'm like, you've never been to she's Forward? Never been to forward. Like never been to forward. So just when you think that, you know, but that's just funny because, like, you, you sometimes you think, oh, you never heard of this and that. And, then, you know, not everyone has. So yeah. we get down to Forward. Check it out. Now, I have kids, and I'm a suburb dad, and we don't go out partying. And, but when, when we do... We did, We never not go to forward. Okay. And, it's, and it's not always a huge headbanging party. We had a live right. band. We our average guest last night was probably sixty five years old. Yeah, full full of people watching live music, and then we you know we have you know bull parties. We have, we have everything different. So you just gotta you know follow us on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Sundays, we you got, always you got pool say, parties on pool Sundays. parties, nighttime stuff. You guys still do your yoga? Oh yeah, we're doing one on this Sunday, I believe. They do Sunday yoga. It's, yeah. it's just really amazing. No, we, we always got something going on. The same yeah. with Magnolia as well. And this year especially, we're going to have a lot of, we're going to be rolling out a lot of new concepts. 
All right, let's talk about LeBron James. <laughs> and I want to know, um, I mean, we don't need to get into all the nitty-gritty stories, but I'd love to, you know. I, I didn't know about the, the birthday story. Yeah, so he. That's great. He started coming around right when Magnolia opened um, two years ago. Uh, he, you know, doesn't go out often at all. He's very family oriented, everything like that. And he's there's a there's a next level of fame which I haven't really seen until getting to know him. That there's almost things you don't want to do and can't do like normal people that sure you know a lot of the Browns Indians can easily do, but he can't. And you know his his team reached out to me and Bobby and. He became a Magnolia regular. We have his own little spot. We have everything. And through that, I've become a close Security, personal friend. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we do everything. Yeah, he has yeah, his own right. team. Yeah. The, his cool team. Man. He's uh, He's got Randy with him, Brandon Weems. He's got all of his guys. Rich, his head of security. Um, he com- It's a whole operation. It's another level of fame. You it's, nailed it. I right? have to. I, stuff, I don't. Yeah. The nights he comes in are great. Love having him. Love. We'll always have him in when he comes into town. But I don't have a life for the rest of the night. And... Their favorite time is staying when people leave. So my okay. night's long after that. Sure. But, you know, between bringing them in through the garage and his whole entourage, and the, you know, when the whole team comes out, that's a whole other operation. But right. he enjoys himself. He sits at the same corner. So everybody that's mad if you don't get a VIP table or anything, LeBron never gets a table. He always likes to sit at the bar. People watch, all that kind of stuff. Oh, um, really? Drinks red wine and Fiji water. That's it. Love and, it. You know, if uh, he off day, they have a bye week or something before the playoffs, it'll be, you know, well, I'm five Nikita. seven. He's six eight. We have one thing in common. I both we both love red wine. Yeah, exactly. I love you it. and me both. They all yeah. of us do. But uh, it's yeah, it's he has so much fun when he comes out. He brings a lot of. And he's not a lot for me uh, socially. Yeah. Just you know, I can say you know I, I'm in charge of throwing the parties for LeBron James, and that brought me the Kardashians. That brought me a lot of these big names that you've seen that I've had in just over the past couple months. Right. It's been crazy, um, and I feel like that kind of catapulted that. And without, but even like that, with the lower tier, with my Indians buddies, with all that, that's where it all started. Yeah. And that brought me LeBron, and then LeBron brought us, I mean, we're getting big. We've had Little John, you know, the Jersey Shore people, like Chloe Kardashian threw her best friend's birthday party with You guys me. had Little John? That's twice. Oh, no way. <laughs> so he actually performed, he performed and forward, loved our staff, literally he loved our staff so much, probably mostly our bottle girls, but he came, he was in town for Roverfest. Yeah. He literally I hit, saw. hit us up at 12.30 in the morning. To come and hang out at Magnolia when it was raining out. It was pouring out. He still wanted to come and see everybody. Yeah. And it's just that kind of stuff that That's cool. you realize we have national attention. I saw him in Vegas, Vegas yeah. at Hakkasan okay. earlier this Good year. Spot. And I just saw him at, at Rover Fest. Yep. And he was great. Um, and and then that leads me to actually MJK. Because I forgot. <laughs> no, he's my boy. Oh, oh my boy. Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly. So I, I got to tell you, like, when, when he... Did the first time I ever heard of him is when he did that that mob thing where he yep. got arrested in, in um, South Park Mall. Yep, remember that? Oh yeah. Now I didn't never heard a song, nothing. I'm like who's this boy with all these tattoos, thinking he's a rapper? I never heard any of his stuff. But I've, I'm I'm di- I like diverse when it comes to music. Yep. I love rap, you name it, country, rock. I, I like it all. And um, when I started listening to MGK, it was it, it became addictive. He's I was amazing. like. And so all my, my, my partners that are down in Dallas, all of them MGK fans, yep. and we were at a golf outing. Long story short, this guy that we're, we're now good friends with had two extra tickets to Roverfest VIP, and he goes, hey, man, I got these two tickets, and MGK, they changed their flights. My, my partners were up here from Dallas. They changed their flights just to go to the concert, <laughs> and it wasn't like a full-blown MGK concert because it was he was opening for yeah. whatever that other band was, but... Um, it's amazing watching him nonetheless. Tell me a little bit about our boy, so, MGK. So, Kelvs, Kelvs is another regular, another yes. friend of mine that is, honest to God, you want to go be around a guy that just can start a party naturally. Right. They call him the wild boy for a reason. So, right. even anytime he's performed at Ford, anytime he's performed like in private, anything like that, he's climbing on the ceiling. He's, he's just a ball of energy. Yeah. And, to see, and you want to talk about another maturity story. He went from, you know, what he was doing rapping in colleges and stuff like that, getting tatted up, just street credit, trying to, get, to be in, you know, Grammy-nominated movies, Netflix. He's playing a movie with Sandra Bullock coming up. His his uh, his live bloom went yeah, berserk platinum. Amazing. And you know what? Album. He's a guy that still comes to Cleveland. He just left Cleveland today for L.A. Um, he texted me to wish me happy birthday. His whole crew, I mean, it, it's he's still so in touch with Cleveland. He has a, you know, huge house in L.A., Oh, is he out there? Yeah, he has a big house in L.A. and everything. He's got his daughter. He takes great care of his daughter. But just he's 
such a diehard Cleveland guy again because he knows that's what started it. Right. And it's Cleveland's been such an amazing platform for like guys like him, athletes, every people like you, me, just a jumping off point. Sure. It's but it's becoming a small Chicago. It's becoming a small LA. It's 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 unbelievable. It is. But yeah, he is diehard Cleveland and he's so fun. And anytime he hits us up to come in, absolutely come on in. He doesn't he's not how yeah, he's you know, he's a hard rapper, he's he's got all these tats, he's he's not really like that. Right. He's a good kid. When you hear him <laughs> talk in, in, in interviews and everything, I mean, he isn't like no, what you would expect. Not at all. At all. And he he's well a, spoken. He's, he's articulate. He's such a talent. He can play every instrument. He sings. He, he can dance. He can rap. That's, he can do. He can act. It, it's unbelievable. That's and, what blew me away the first time I saw him at House of Blues. Mm-hmm. Is that he grabbed that guitar and started going into Prince, which I didn't know at the time, <laughs> but that's a huge influence. Yep. You know, Prince is one. He's got many yeah. influences, and Prince is one of them. Mm-hmm. And I saw a diverse musician. That, you know, this guy isn't even a rapper. No. He could do it all. Yep. Amazing. Uh, and he's just, he represents the city, you know, with, with his songs and everything like this. I mean, he's 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 been another person who just, you know, rose from no one knew him. And even through a lot of his songs, he tells the story. Yep. When P. Diddy called him, and I don't remember which song oh, that yeah. was, but, like, I listen to him every single day. When I'm working out, it's part of... You yeah, know. and even his slower stuff, super. Mo- he's got a lot of motivational stuff. If you listen to it, it's uh, oh, it's yeah. been quite the process. And I love a lot of people. You know, oh, go back to rap and do this. His, yeah. his, his new stuff's amazing. And we had his album release party at Forward oh, for Bloom, you? and they played it. He did pretty much every song live. It was it was unbelievable. I've taken a trip to Chicago with him and my buddy Devin Harris. Uh, every every club he goes in, people hand him a mic, and he'll just perform six seven songs just for everybody in there, just to have a good time. And he had, loves doing it. Yeah. Loves it. He's just he's one of the good ones for sure. Love it, man. For sure. Well, that's great, man. If there was, um, I mean, Cleveland, obviously, it's just we talked about this entire time. And we're, we're, the music's great. There's great club with forward and just the energy throughout it. The other thing is restaurants. So uh, we'll end it on Ooh. this. What is your favorite place to eat? If that won't get you in too much trouble, oh, it won't get me in trouble. I some people. I, that's. That's part of the thing, you know. People come out to the club, and I got to yeah. set them somewhere to dinner first. Yeah. So Bob, Bobby and I have bought a lot of dinners over the past couple of years, I bet. but um, XO is always one of my strong ones. Uh, my people, at Lago is probably my favorite place to hang out. Love I Lago. love Brennan. I love Fabio to death. I love the whole Salerno family. Great, pe- great people. Hey, that's probably my number one. It'll yep. always be my number one. Yep. Um, the new Marble Room is a sight to see. I haven't been there yet, and okay. I keep like it's a date night. Oh yeah, it's a date wife, night. I yeah, it's a date so night for bad. sure. Yeah. <laughs> But I just see my, my but, brother-in-law went, and they're like, he couldn't, he literally all night long could not stop talking about the steak that he had at the Marble Room. Yeah, oh yeah, so, the, the atmosphere itself is worth, they could charge cover just to come in and look at the place. They, they give tours, they, it, live music, saxophone, violin, every night. Um, but you're Italian. 100% so Italian. So what's your favorite, like, pizza place? Pizza place? Yes. Oh man, my favorite pizza I probably ever had was in Chicago. Um, not a lot of good pizza. Yeah, I'm in talking Pittsburgh. I know. I'm trying to like narrow. Angelo's is awesome in Lakewood. Thank Angelo's you. Is great. Is that yours? We can just be done now. <laughs> Shut it off. Yeah. I think we're brothers from another mother. That's what huh? it is, man. But, no, but yeah, man, Angelo's say, hands I'm, down. I'm like, say Angelo. Yeah, yeah. For my small time I spent in Lakewood. I'm going there tonight. Well, there you go. If you'd like, I'm, I'm, buy, I'm happy to buy you a, a, a <laughs> bring pint it over, bring it over and forward. a slice. Oh yeah, you got to be down hosting there. Hosting a big so. charity event tonight. Awesome, and then we have Blau coming in from Vegas. Well, look at all these these people watching. There we we didn't get any questions for this man, so I think we're going to shut her down. But man, I appreciate you being on. Thank you so much for having me. Let's do it again sometime soon. I'd love to. I'm going to see you down at Forward. If not before, for sure, August 30th, we're going to kick off Rock and Restock. You can get your tickets at rockandrestockcle.com and come see this guy. Yeah. We got um, we only have a few um, VIP tents that we haven't sold out yet. I think we're only there's only like four left. Yeah, get, get, them, get them now. They're going to sell out. We sold it out oh, two yeah, years ago. Way in advance. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, and if, you have, if you watch today or ever watch this guy's show at all, drop – Drop it at the door. I'll make sure you guys get it for free and skip oh, the man, line and everything I like that. that. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll start a little partnership. I appreciate that, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Absolutely. Right, man. Do it again you have soon. a good one. See you All guys. right, Cleveland.